tour, I'm off to Norway. So I thought this would be a good time to do one of those what's in my bag, what do I pack kind of videos. So this is everything that I'm taking for a nine day trip to Norway. We're going to be in Lofoten, shooting in the snow. It's going to be cold. Uh, this is a 71 litre uh, North Face base camp duffel bag. And it's super tough and we'll survive everything. Now, because we're going to be spending most of our time in a Jeep and an accommodation, I don't need to be carrying the stuff on my back. If I'm going camping or if I'm going to a place where there's a lot of hiking and we're going to be hiking between mountain huts, then I take this. This is a 50 litre, 51 litre Osprey Atmos with a fantastically comfortable uh, uh, back. Super comfortable to carry. But the fact is this is 51 litres and this is 70 litres and you can see this actually takes up less space than this. So when I can, I prefer to take this. This has got absolutely everything in it that I'm taking on the trip because I prefer to only have one bag as much as possible. So when I'm moving through the airport, when we're slinging stuff in and out of the Jeeps to move from one location to another, I like to have everything in one bag. But obviously when I'm actually flying, my camera gear and everything valuable doesn't stay in this. This goes in the hold. But what I do is, you can see inside, this is all the camera gear. And this is what comes with me into the cabin. And all I do is just take off this. That's my carry-on. So this comes with me with my carry-on. Now, the reason why I don't take a camera bag or a backpack or stuff like that is because there are too many times when you can get on a flight which is really, really packed and you get to the front of the queue and they're asking you to put, to put your backpacks and stuff in the hold. And I really don't want to do that when it's got my lenses, my camera, my drone, batteries, things like that in it. Now, I know if I've got a super small bag like this, which has got everything important, they're never going to ask me to ship stuff in, put, to put stuff in the hold. I'm never going to have to worry about that. This actually fits under the seat, so you don't have to worry about there being no space in, in, the, in the lockers above your head. And it's just a tiny thing to be carrying around the airport. And then as soon as we get to where we're going, this goes back in there again. The straps go back on that, and I'm good to go. So let's see what I'm taking. So this is everything that I'm taking. Now all my clothes you can see that I like to pack them into these packing cubes. These are really good. They help organize everything. They keep, they take up a lot of space and make packing a lot easier. And I'm kind of a little bit like that. I tend to be really a bit over organized in the way that I pack stuff and I, it just kind of helps me keep track of where everything is and, uh, and get take as little amount of stuff as possible. You can see there's a backpack here. This holds down really flat. It was in, it was in the North Coast bag, it was in the hold all. Uh, this is the bag that I use in the field when I'm out shooting and what happens is this which has got all the photography gear and that which has got some other stuff in fits in here like this. So this is the bag that I take with me when I'm out shooting. It's got everything that I need photographically and then there's a tripod which kind of fits in the side or I carry it in my hand. This is really nice. It's not a camera bag. It's super lightweight. It folds down flat. It's waterproof. It's got a weatherproof hood in the bottom. It's got loads of pockets and you can see that it's got front openings so you can easily access all your gear. This is the iPad. This is for when I'm on the flight. Uh, the iPad goes in this case, but usually when I'm when I'm out shooting, this doesn't come with me. And then you can see there's all my gear in there. So I have a look at what I've got in here and what's in all of the other bags. And this is everything. So what I've got here, this is my insulator. This is a down jacket from RAV. And this is a shell, waterproof, windproof shell, which goes over the top of this uh, or not, depending on what the weather is. I'll put links to all this stuff down below if anyone's interested. These are my hiking boots the Salomon uh, Quest. Then there's a pair of hiking trousers here. These are Chalwell Raven hiking trousers. They're fantastic, they're windproof. You put wax on the seals, they make them pretty much waterproof. There's some wrap gaiters. And then here there's a pair of um, insulated snowboarding trousers. Now usually I wouldn't take these if I were backpacking and fitting everything into a backpack. Then these wouldn't go because they're quite bulky and they take up a lot of space. But because I'm taking the hold all, I can kind of afford a few little luxuries. And those are the kind of things that are really nice if you're standing around at night, if you're not hiking, but if you're standing around at night, shooting the northern lights, not moving very much, it's really nice to have something a little bit warmer on your legs. They completely say the snowboard trousers, so they're totally waterproof and windproof. These are all my layers. So there's basically base layers, mid layers, uh, for both the top and the bottom. Pretty much everything here is merino. Most of it's from either icebreaker or rab. And I tend to go with things that are half zip, so you can kind of vent easy or you can pull it up around your neck. 
Uh, and just using these in different layers, so you can have like a base layer with a medium base layer at the top, and then maybe a, a fleece like this, then the, um, the insulated jacket, and then if it's really raining or very windy, then the outer shell as well. Then you don't really need to see this, this is socks and underwear, that's not really that important. These are basically for walking around, these are camp slippers, they're, they're insulated, they're fantastic for when you don't want it, when you're not wearing your shoes and if you're walking around, if you're inside your tent or if you're walking around inside a, in a hostel or a mountain refuge or something like that or in this case we're going to be in accommodation, it's just something to keep your feet warm because in most hostels or most mountain refuges you're not allowed to wear your boots so you leave those at the door and then you find yourself walking around barefoot or in your socks. Uh, it's just not very nice, these just make things a lot more tasty and a lot more cosy. Then these are glove liners and thick insulated gloves. So basically I'll wear these to keep warm, but if I'm struggling to manipulate the camera, then I can take these off and I'll still have these on underneath. And it means I don't get completely cold hands when I have to take these off. Uh, a shoot or a neck warmer, or I don't know what you call these, but you pull it over your head, pull it up, covers your nose, keeps the wind and the weather off. And of course a hat. So. That's pretty much it for clothes. So then there's just the camera gear, which is, this is, these are chargers for both the DJI Mavic drone and the Fuji cameras. Uh, and just other stuff, bits and pieces in here. I've got things like, uh, there's a blower brush and a, an Arctic butterfly for cleaning the sensor. And then I've got various cleaning cloths and stuff like this. This tends to stay in the accommodation. I don't usually take this into the field with me. Then this is my wash kit and first aid kit and just stuff like that, which just leaves the camera gear, which is all here. So this is my iPad, as I say, this doesn't normally go into the field with me. It stays in the hotel. And then this is pretty much everything that I need in the camera. So there's my X-T2 there. There's usually a secondary camera there, but I'm filming with that. That's the X-T20 also with the lens on it. A couple of lenses. This is a telephoto lens. It's a 55 to 200, which is great for compressing landscapes, shooting distant landscapes. I don't know if you saw the last video or not the last video, the video I did about uh, using telephotos for landscapes. I find these absolutely valuable, particularly when you're in mountains or when you're shooting mountains. So the telephoto ticket always goes with me and the, uh, the X-T2, this has got a 10 to 24 ultra wide angle zoom on the body. Then this is cable releases. I've always got two because you never know, you can always lose one and it's a pretty essential thing to have. Then here's the, the, the Mavic is underneath there and this is a controller for the Mavic. Two spare batteries for the camera and um, spare cards and then two DJI Mavic batteries there. Now in here, this is stuff that goes on the plane with me. Uh, so there is, these are spare batteries. These are AAA batteries. And these are for the head torch that I carry with me. And they're also for the, uh, the Arctic butterfly spare batteries for that. And because I don't really like putting batteries into the hole, they basically travel with me on the plane in here. Then there's a tiny small uh, power pack. This is great for charging my phone. And then I've got one of these which is just fantastic. And if you're traveling and you're a photographer, yeah, you really need to get one of these. It's absolutely awesome. So it's a uh, WD My Passport Wi-Fi SSD. So there have been a few iterations of this. This is the latest one. It's an SSD, so it's pretty solid. You can drop it, bounce it, bang it, and it's not going to damage or, or do any damage to the, uh, to the hard drive. What it is, you can put your SSD card in here, press one button, and it backs up all your images, all your drone images. Everything is backed up straight onto this. It's a fantastic thing to have when you're traveling. So if the worst happens, if you drop your camera, if a card gets corrupted or it gets stolen, you've got this as with all the backups of the images that you've taken on it. And not only that, it's also got a power pack in it. It's got about 10 hours of battery life. So you can use this at a push to charge. It'll charge an iPad completely, an iPad mini completely. And it will also pretty much charge a Fuji battery for the X-T2 or the X-T20. So this gives me an extra charging option in the field because of USB charging. Uh, and on top of that, you can also kind of fill this up, well, fill it up, but before I go, I always shove a load of like documentaries and films and, and TV series on here. So when I'm sitting around the airports, when I'm traveling, when I'm bored, when I've got some downtime, this connects by Wi-Fi to the, to the iPad and you can basically watch movies through a Wi-Fi connection. And yeah, 
I don't have to put movies on here, it's not got a lot of space on it, but this has got 500 gigabytes, but you can also get them with one terabyte or two terabytes, it's got loads of space, and it just, it's just a fantastic thing to have and, and travel with, and I would always have one in my bag if I were you. So that comes with me into the field. Then there's, this is all in a uh, F-stop ICU, which is an internal camera unit, uh, pro case, uh, pro small case. They do them in different sizes. Now I've stopped make backpacks and they make some really nice backpacks. It's just that I think they're overpriced and I tend to not use camera bags. Uh, I tend to use the, the backpack system that I showed earlier on. It just works better for me. Uh, but these ICUs are absolutely fantastic because they're really rigid, really solid. They protect your gear. And this fits perfectly into the backpack that I use. And as I say, I can just attach straps to it and carry it around with the airport. It's got everything that I need. So this is a small pro. The pro means that it's deeper. It means I can get the, the, a lot more stuff in it. Then this is another uh, SL ICU. This is a micro and this basically has my filters. So there's the, the filter holder here, which screws onto the lens. I've got three filters in there. I don't tend to use a lot of filters. There's a six stop for long exposures. There's a two stop for things like waterfalls or getting, if I want to get that half a second wave action at dusk. And then there's a two stop ND grad, which is great for reflections or if I just want to brighten the sky, but quite often I'll just tend to uh, shoot multiple exposures and blend in Lightroom. So filters and filter case there. A um, couple of spare lenses going here. This has, this is the 14 millimeter F2.8 which I'm taking with me to Norway because hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be shooting the Northern Lights. And this is because it's got a fast aperture and my other wide angle is an F4, this is F2.8. Let's more lighting, which is better for shooting night skies, for shooting stars and for shooting the Northern Lights. And then there are a few other things in here. This is spare props for the, for the drone, landing gear for the drone. And then this is field charges. And the other charge about this one, these are all AC charges, but these are field charges. So this is a drone charger that I can connect to the car. Uh, and a USB charger for the Fuji batteries, which I can connect also to the car, or I can connect it to a battery pack or to the, uh, to the SSD hard drive that I showed you earlier. Then, um, Gitso Traveler tripod. This is a super lightweight, super small tripod. Uh, I, yeah, it would be nice to be able to carry a slightly bigger tripod, but this fits so small in the bag, it takes up no weight, and it's really sturdy. I've used it in quite high winds. I used it a lot, for example, last September, October, when I was in the Dolomites, it got really windy there, and it was pretty solid. And then there's this, which is a Gorilla Pod. Now, I use this for my backup camera, for the X-T20, which is what I'm filming this in. With, and basically, this is kind of cool. It's pretty solid. If I'm shooting with the main camera and I see something else I don't want to shoot, I can set this up and shoot a time lapse or something like that. You can wrap it around fences and it's just a useful thing. It takes up no space at all. It's tiny, has no weight, so it's a useful thing to throw in the bag. And I think that's pretty much everything in the backpack, which I've now put over there. There are a few extra things. There are things like a head torch, things like a pen knife, and it's a, a, what do you call it, a leatherman. A few other bits and pieces, lens cloths for cleaning the camera. So the backpack normally is the same in the field. This and this are in there. It's got a few other things as well. So in here, there's a head torch for just seeing when it's dark. And, uh, and like I said, small leatherman. And then I've got always shower caps. Now these are particularly useful. You can get them on any flight uh, or, or hotels and things like that. Uh, and what they're great for is if you're shooting near waterfalls or if you're shooting where there's a lot of spray or if it's drizzling or something like that, this you, I just drop them over the camera and the lens and it just keeps a lot of the rain and a lot of the spray off. Or just if I'm shooting near a waterfall, I just hook them over the filters and then take them off again when I want to actually do the shot to try to keep as little spray on the lens as possible. Then these are rubber cleats, uh, a couple of these. It's going to be pretty icy where we're going. These are not crampons. We wouldn't expect to be doing any hiking or anything like that, so I'm not taking any crampons with me. These just flip, they attach onto the bottom of your boots, and they just give you a little bit more grip when you're walking around in, in streets and places, uh, a little bit off uh, through tracks and stuff like that, where you just need a little bit of extra grip because there's some snow or some ice underfoot. But as I say, they're not cramp crampons. Uh, and then lots of these. You get these in boxes of 200s. These are Zeiss, Zeiss, Zeiss. Lens wipes, these are just excellent for keeping your lenses and your filters and iPad and iPhone screens and glasses, spectacles if you wear them. They're excellent for keeping them clean. They're a little bit moist, so you just you wipe them on and it's, at the beginning it smears, but then when you spend a few seconds cleaning them, they're the best thing that I've ever found for keeping filters and lenses clean. And I've got loads of these, I just kind of 
every pocket of every bag has just got a set of these and they're pretty much everywhere. So that's everything. I'm off to Norway tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it, really excited. Now hopefully while I'm there, I'm gonna be able to do a couple more videos. I've got some plans for different things to do. Hopefully that'll all pan out. Uh, and if you've got any questions or any comments, please drop me a comment. I really appreciate reading the comments. It's always such a pleasure to read. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, as always, thanks for watching and take care.